Oh, technology. If I'm live, stand by one because I'm not showing up yet. <laughs> and I, uh, I don't actually know whether it worked. This is my daily occurrence every time I do this. But I have faith. One day this is going to get easier. Oh, and look at this before I get all sorts of feedback. I'm going to remember to mute. It is quite the production to go live. Uh, get cameras set up, close the lines so there's no reflection, turn on the light so it's not too dark, mute the thing so you can, um, it, it's just, it's funny to me because there's just so many steps and I, every time they seem like they're surprised to me. Okay. So, and then I got to get the chat window open, but I can't get the chat window open until I hit live. So if anybody knows a way to make this easier, oh dear Lord, tell me. <laughs> okay, at least I can remember all the steps now. So hello everybody, my peeps. It is Tuesday afternoon, so it is time for Technique Tuesday. As you can tell, I have been crafting away and I'm now covered in uh, shaded spruce and night of navy. So there we have it. But today, I also at the last minute noticed that my camera for some reason was going like this in front of my face. And uh, so I moved it, but now that I moved it, everything's shifting. Uh, I also have to tell you, it's been very dangerous in the craft room of late because I put a new chair in here because the other one was crooked, just causing some back issues. And uh, this one rolls much more than the other one does. So every now and again, my chair gets away from me, it moves way faster and I, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the expression arse over tea kettle, but I, I suspect one of those moments is coming soon. Okay, so today, Technique Tuesday, I'm going to show you, it's a bit of an unboxing as well, but mostly I thought I'm going to show you that uh, you can be a rebel like me. Hello, Nicole. Uh, you can be a rebel like me and uh, follow the kit contents or instructions when you go to a class and somebody gives you a package full of stuff or you can just do your own thing. So today I'm gonna to show you how to do your own thing. First up, I'm gonna show you with those off screen. Yes, I got my new kit. Um, this is the one that I had mentioned before that's coming with the kit collection. Oh, look at that, the writing is even the right direction. Oops, <laughs> I was gonna make a joke about the thing limp, but never mind. Um, so this is the tag kit. And I do suspect it will sell out because the other one did sell out. And because these tags are big and beautiful and can make cards quite easily with them. So this is the kit that I had mentioned was in the kit collection. So available while supplies last, this is the kit. And then it came with these, these awesome treat bags. So these treat bags, I'm gonna try not to touch them too much because I'm gonna put candy in them for somebody or, or actually given the size of them, I will likely put crack in them for people, which I should explain, but I'm not going to. Because if you know me, you know what I mean by crack. All right. A minute, my bags are upside down. So these bags are imprinted. So we have trees. We have plaid. I love a good plaid. We have, what well, I'm going to assume, snowballs, maybe bubbles. I don't know. Because it's winter, I say snowballs. And foliage. What show was I watching yesterday where the guy kept saying foliage? And the guy said, no, foliage. No foliage, no foliage. That was very entertaining. Forestry humor, I love it. Okay, so you get these bags. So you get 12 bags. These are separate. These are two separate items. They don't all come together, but they came out at the same time and they coordinate. Stampin' Up is very good at coordinating. So 12 bags, 12 tags, if you'd like to make treat holders. Now, if you don't want to make treat holders, then don't make treat holders. It's crafting. There's no rules. Uh, so I'm just trying to figure out where I can put things that they will still be accessible, but not in my way. Okay, so for example, this is, I'm kind of trying to be sneaky and keep it off. So this is one of the tags. I, I put a little bow on here. Normally when I would tie these on, I would wrap it around the top of the bag and then tie the bow. But just to give you the idea that there would be a bow on here. So this is one of the tags. This is Joy. And it, it's, the colors in it are, are um, bright and vibrant and there's lots of pink in it, which I didn't expect, but I embrace the pink, you'll see that. So this is one tag, which I have very quickly, I was doing this at the last minute because I've had 
there's a stamp sale tomorrow in case you didn't see all those things I sent out. There's a stamp sale. Um, so I was busy trying to do posters and things and that because uh, the only thing better than stamps is stamps that are cheap so you can buy more. So this is, and this took literally, I, I put the, I pulled the tag out and I thought, let me put a little base around it. So I just cut out a piece and then I freehanded this. It wasn't that hard. It just a couple little loops and I left it straight on the bottom on purpose just because it, it made the scallop more accented on the bottom. And then the, I would show you, but the stamps are all dirty set off to the side here. The kit comes with this big uh, spruce bow behind it. So I just stamped it red on red. This is Poppy Parade um, to give kind of a background. And I love this. This is a simple card that, but see how what I meant when I said these car, these stamps are huge? Not these stamps, these tags are huge and they easily fit a card. This is a standard card base. So these are good size tags. Now you could just stamp the to and from on the back of the tag and use it, but there's one card. I'm saving the best for last, I think. Um, well, I say that when I haven't actually finished some of them, but this is one of the tags. This is the uh, the tree one, Mary and Bright. And I put a couple little gems, or I left a little gem in the middle there. So this one went as well. Now this one I did get a little stalled because I was rushing, but I also found that I, I, was at a, I was at a crossroads as it were. I originally started with my shaded spruce, but then I switched to pool party. And now I can't decide if I like like the tone on toneness of that or the contrast of that. I think I like the contrast better, but I was just so impressed with this one. And I might end up making it this one and cutting a strip down the middle that I'm going to emboss with, I don't know, snowflakes or foliage or foliage or whatever and put this one on. But nonetheless, it will make a great card when I finish. If I wasn't so rushed, I would have finished. Um, this one is the Santa tag. Loving it. The tree pops more on the shaded spruce. Yeah, see, I think so too. I was just so impressed that it, how, how well it coordinated with the other ones. That's really high. Um, I, I will end up with shaded spruce, I'm sure. I just, I need to figure out a background and I didn't want to do another tone on tone. Hey, Jen, welcome to the fun. Um, so yeah, this one, I, as much as I love this card with the tone on tone in the background and it made it really nice. And maybe I will do the same thing again because. I love it. Um, I was trying to come up with a different plan for that one. Uh, so the Santa one, the Santa one has so many different colors. And I love that this looks like a little chalkboard. This is Night of Navy ink that comes in the kit. But I had just re-inked my ink pad. But it's so dark in some of these things that it kind of reads black. And so I thought, well, I'm going to put lots of black trim. Oh, I have, I have misplaced my card base now. Oh, there we go. So this is, as far, this is as far as I got on this card. I think I was gonna layer it up with a little bit of black because I thought this was a little too much black <laughs> to go just like this. Although, now, see now that I say that, I changed my mind, maybe it's not. Because if I take my, my craft ink, if I venture out of the kit and take my craft ink and, and uh, stamp around here, it will look like even more chalkboard. I think what's getting me about this one is that Santa has no bottom. He just has a top out, and so I'm struggling a little bit with that one. But nonetheless, I will come up with something. So there's that one. And then, believe it or not, my favorite card of the whole kit um, was even before I made the card, this tag. I love this tag. And maybe it's nostalgia. My very first car ever was a Renola car, which if you're not familiar with, my dad coined the phrase, it looks like a roller skater. It's just a little bit bigger. So it was a very square French car. Oops, I'm leaning the wrong way there. And it, oh my God, I love this car. It was a standard. And I had never really driven a standard before. I had a friend who owned a standard and I asked him if he would show me how to drive. And he gave me one very quick lesson in a parking lot. Super easy, right? Oh, hell, I can drive a standard. So I picked up my little standard car in downtown Edmonton in the River Valley at a place that's Actually, I think it might even still be there, but a um, little mechanic shop that was right beside Matark Conservatory. So right in the bottom of the River Valley. And I proceeded to my first ever actual time driving a car to drive my little brand new standard um, home from downtown in rush hour. What was I thinking? I don't know. I got off work. I went down to pick up the car and I started to drive home. And I had so many people honking at me because... As you know, if you're down here by the Matart, everything is up. 
So I was coming out and I was at my first set of lights and I was in the turn lane and we kept having a turn light and I kept stalling the car because I hadn't quite got the, quite got the gist of, of the standard yet. And I think I went through three turn lights before I could do it. And I am stubborn. Who am I stubborn? And they honked all they want. And I just thought, buddy, the more you honk, the less I care. So I just sat there until I finally got it. I drove home. By the time I got home, I was just like shaking and exhausted from the ordeal. But, but I had done it. And after that, driving was a breeze. Nonetheless, my little Renault car was this same color, like bright, bright yellow. And I loved that car. It was very tiny. We went camping in it. We loaded that thing up. And then somebody hit it and killed it. And I was very upset. Uh, yes, the car was a person. They actually killed it. Um, so maybe it is a bit of nostalgia that comes with this particular tag. That was a very big, long, off to the side squirrel moment. But nonetheless, um, so yes, so this is my favorite tag. When I saw this kid, I'm like, I have to have this. So then I decided to embrace the fact that it has a little pink trim here and a little pink trim here. And I am so not a pink person. Oh, so not a pink person. But check that bad boy out. I love this card. And all I did, I'm going to drop it if I try, was the same. Here we go. So the same little piece that made this joy. Stampin' Up's very good. The, the green piece here and the yellow piece here, you don't stamp on. So there's like one of each, right? But the little white pieces, there's several of each because if you mess up on your stamping, they want to give you a shot. So I took up, there's a bunch of extra ones of these. So without even adding paper in the kit, I took this little present stamp, which comes in the kit. As I said, I should show you what the actual stamp set looks like, but it's spread out on blocks and all dirty. And I just, I picked Pool Party, uh, Poppy Parade, and Bumblebee, which are the colors in, in the kit. And I snapped out three little presents and I popped them up because I like me my dimensionals. And I made this little card and this is on, oh, and I forgot the name of it. This is our in color with the pink, <laughs> which this is why we need to have this here because I can just cheat in case you didn't know and you look on the back of the thing and it will tell you that it's polished pink because it tells you all the coordinating colors on the back of the piece. So I love this card. I'm thinking this card is, is awesome. My first car is also a standard. Didn't know how to drive. Dropped me off and left me. I was able to drive standard pretty well. See, this is, this is, Jen, I think this is how you learn, right? You're just like do or die. You either learn to drive standard or you sit in the same spot forever until somebody rescues you. Um, I loved driving a standard as well. Uh, I still have one. My, my Jeep that I have is a standard. Um, some days when you wish you could like just drive down the road and tune everything out and drink a coffee. Standards maybe not so much fun, but most of the time, oh yes. And I still prefer standard in the winter because because uh, you're more in control of like how much, I don't know. It feels to me like you're more in control, maybe you're not actually. Um, but I find that I don't skid as much, I don't slide around. It just feels like you have more, more say over the revs. Um, anyways, yes, so I, I kind of breezed through that kit. This kit, I, I didn't even think I said what this kit was called because love Santa tag kit. So like I said, make a tag, make a card. <laughs> I know it's a very cliche expression right now, but you do you. Here, I'm gonna put mine on top. I'll take some pictures of those afterwards because I literally was rushing around to get ready for this and <laughs> like didn't even quite finish them. And then my other props that I was gonna have ready, they're not even ready, but I'm gonna show you nonetheless because it's time to do two kits today to show you how you could just do your own thing. So this next one is October's, <laughs> I wonder if you can see that. I know there's a reflection on my glasses and that might actually be in my favor because sometimes I can't help myself when I think I have to like close one eye and like really think. This is October's paper pumpkin. So this is the one that just came. Thank you to everybody who supported the nurses uh, fundraiser. This is the kit that we got them and, and I'm glad it's as good as it is because um, because they will thoroughly enjoy it. And that's what it was all about, was giving them some time to just enjoy. So this is the kit and it makes uh, five of each of these cards and came with these gorgeous envelopes. So it was actually the envelopes that made me think of this because like I said, <laughs> I'm not very good at following. I like to do my own thing lots of the time. So I have in the past made treat containers out of cards or out of envelopes. So anybody who gets this kit and who thinks, well, those are great, but I don't want those as cards. I have enough cards. <laughs> Is there ever such a thing I have enough cards? Um, yeah, you can, as I drop them off, you can uh, quick, quickly and easily, and I'm gonna show you because I didn't even practice beforehand. I'm just gonna do it completely from memory. Uh, this is one of the cards. 
And no, it's not crooked. It's just not glued down because basically all I had time for was to pop all the pieces out of the kit and throw them in a pile. And if I was to shake it, they would all go, oh, it's not actually holding together pretty well. All these little elements come with the kit and they all just popped out. It, it literally took me 30 seconds to do that. I just would have to actually pop them all down. See, and that's my more abstract version of, of the card all askew. So this is, you get five of these. This is one of the cards and I love these cards. And, and people always um, comment on how hard it is to make masculine cards. And I sometimes, I sometimes struggle with the word masculine because I'm just not super girly. I love these cards. But for guys or for girls who don't like super frilly cards, I guess, or don't like the bright big ones, um, these cards are great. They're just nice, deep colors. They're beautiful. Okay, so that's one card. Um, I did notice, and I, and I will do something with it. Um, I saw somebody else who had made a card. This is the punch out. So when, these, when you get these cards in the kit, they come like this. I don't know if you can see that. So they're already die cut. Ooh, that was a sudden move. They're already die cut and you just pop them out carefully so you don't rip them. That was actually the most timely part of doing that other card is not wanting to rip them. So you just pop them out. So then the positive image, which is the trees on the card, go in one half. And, and actually the card sample I saw, she had just put a, a plain piece of green paper behind it and you could use different colored paper or different colored paper, but, but look how cool that looks. And then made that into a card front, no waste or into a box or into, actually, you know what, now that I think of it, that would probably fit quite nicely in our little square scallop boxes to make a really cool top. So there's that one. And then the other card that comes in the kit is this one, which I've lost my little red bow. Again, not fixed down. Is this not gorgeous? I mean, oh my goodness, look at how gorgeous this is. Now, anyone who stamps with me <laughs> or gets a card for me, um, much to their chagrin, knows that I rarely fold my cards like this, like a, la like a portrait card. If, if the card was to go like this, sure, I fold it this way because I like my cards to be able to stand up. So generally when I make a portrait card so that it stands up, it's the long skinny piece. Now when I go to a someone else's house or team meeting or I get it, normally I just like, well, fine, you said to go this way, but I'm turning it. But as you notice, this is not going to work to turn this card sideways. I guess it's what it looks like outside if you were laying. I don't know. Um, anyways, it's not going to work. But easy peasy solve to that. At least one of them. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to cut this in half because I'll knock everything over in the attempt to get another one. I'm going to do something else with this one. Is just split this card in half. If you cut it straight down the score line at four and a quarter, you can then just tape it onto the front of your card base not tape it. Use, well, actually, that's not true. I do tape everything. I love tear and tape. I would use tear and tape on this. So you can make it the exact front of the card just by cutting it in half. You can also trim it down. What did I do with my, my little piece here? You could also trim it down a little bit and you could mount it on the base with like this, right? Put a little bit of a thing around it. But the important part is not really just that Tracy gets her way and gets to fold her card the way she wants. But look how gorgeous this, this is. Do you really need the back of the card to be as gorgeous? Most people hang it this way. Split it in half, pop them on card bases, two gorgeous cards instead of one. And now you've just doubled how many of these you get. So instead of five, you have 10. If you have the uh, coordinating snap sets, and bundle that go with this. This this one was meant to coordinate with Peaceful Cabin. You will notice that you can make more trees. There's like three different dies that make this. There's the long die cuts, all the stamps. So you can make more die cuts to go with your cards if you want. You only have five sets of like card fixins, as I like to call them. Um, but you can easily make that into two. But <laughs> As I decided that I did not need tags, I needed cards. I have decided that I do not need envelopes and cards. I need treat holders. So treat holders it is. So one of my tips for you is if you are going to use envelopes, oh, I forgot to show you one of the best parts of this envelope. The inside's patterned too. Isn't it just gorgeous? It's an envelope, it's gorgeous. So 
but I only have 10 of these because that's how many came in the kit. So I do not want to mess up this envelope um, because I have, I have plans for it. So here's my stamp and trimmer and I just need to score this envelope. I do not need to cut. So best plan then when dealing with limited supplies is to pop out the cutting blade so that you do not accidentally cut when you mean to score. <laughs> yep. That's not experience talking there, folks. <laughs> That's just a guess. Uh, yeah, the number of times I've done it. And it's okay if you're cutting a piece of white paper and you have you know, 10 packs of white paper, but if you're cutting limited supply of envelopes, that's not a cool thing. Okay, so this works with any envelope. And you just have to decide what you want. In this case, I'm going with three quarters of an inch because I know it's worked before. So for those of you unfamiliar with the scoring, there's a set of numbers this way, but there's also a set of numbers this way, right? So in this case, it's gonna be much easier just to go here. So I'm going at the three quarter mark here. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna score three quarters of an inch from the edge. Yeah, yeah it'll work too this way. And the envelopes are not perfectly straight. So I'm really just putting the bottom, I'm putting the envelope against here and the bottom there. And I'm gonna score three quarters of an inch on three sides. I'll leave that there for now. Nope, I won't. Okay, <laughs> I've, made, I've made a mess of my desk in my hurriedness. Now we're gonna fold on all three of these sides. I'm not doing the scoring tool because if you if you burnish too much, and I've made my trees smaller and I realize that, but it just, it just means you're looking at them from farther away. Um, it's still cool. I'm gonna fold this and I'm gonna fold them back the other way. Yeah, I'm not using my, my bone folder on these folds because um, I have in the past also learned that if you are too rough with the envelope, uh, you will rip it. I do not want to rip my envelope. So once we have our fold lines, you just need to do a little bit of manhandling. But for the most part, you are just going to push these sides along the score lines on all three sides. So I'm pushing the the sides flat in, up against the score lines. There's gonna be a crease down the middle, but you'll see in a minute, that's okay. The one on the bottom is not necessary. It just happens to be how it comes from the, because that's where the envelope normally folds. And we're just trying to push everything until it goes into a point. I probably should show it this way. It does not matter which way the point goes, as long as you push it into a point. And then it's, I guess it's the same choice. You can push, fold your points up sideways and have a, Kind of a cool little thing. I tend to put mine underneath so I don't have to look at them. Right? So I'm going to fold these envelopes back. And as I said, I like me some tear and tape. So I'm going to, I'm going to totally block my view. I'm just putting tear and tape on the tips of these little uh, corners. Using my, oops, I think I'm blocking the view with, <laughs> this is why I like to get things done ahead of time because I'm still not used to trying to do things on camera. So I'm gonna fold this over and by just sticking my hand in the inside, I can let me put that down securely. I'm gonna do the other side. I'm taping over top of my tear and tape before I take the edge off. So that's not really the best idea. See, normally when you cry, it's like typing, you know, when you're typing and you can type 600 words a minute and then somebody looks at you while you type and you can type five words a minute. It's like that for me right now. I will eventually get used to seeing what I'm doing on camera and not, not being as rough. It'll smooth out eventually. There we go. Okay, so I've made my, this, now this is when your, your uh, bone folder will come in handy, because you can also just go inside and push down. So now I'm going to decide, I'm just gonna trim these off. I was gonna keep it extra sturdy, but I'm gonna just trim them off. So now if I follow just the actual lines in the card, and I'm noticing now as I'm doing this with a white envelope or with the lighter color ones where the, where the paper is 
like solidly that color, you can hold it a bit more. This one, because the card is printed this color as opposed to the paper being this color, if you keep folding too much, the white's gonna show through on the back or on the creases, not on the back. So now I have us made a treat bag. I didn't fold that very well. I have, to, I have to pull it over so I can fold on the flat. There we go. So now we have a treat bag. So all I've done is push in the sides where I've done it. I fold it over the bottom and taped them down. Um, I have also seen, I don't have any scrap of the right color here, but I've also seen where you can, if you want to make a, a bit a more heavy duty bag, pick a color that actually matches or coordinates at least um, and cut a little square and you can put a square over top of the whole bottom. But I find that depending what you're throwing in here, I have no snacks or anything. Here we go. I'm giving somebody a gift of dice. Look at that. So you pop your treat in. As long as you're not putting anything super heavy in here, um, it's not gonna like it's not gonna break through your bag. So we do that. We fold this over, and we now have our bag. If you want, you can. Let's see if I can do this without without having that dreaded chair incident I was looking <laughs> looking forward to. Uh, we can use our triple punch, go in on the corners, and oops, find the mic. Go in on the corner like that, and we've just now rounded the corner. Uh, so that's how easy it was. All I did was, and it, depending on the envelope, if you were using a note card envelope and it was smaller, um, you could probably go half an inch in. This if you if you wanted to put what would you put in here that's skinny like that a hot chocolate package or maybe the flat i'm trying to draw a blank right now on the names of the flat chocolates insert and press the plus thank you very much um i found it out quite by accident too i i, I don't know what envelopes it was i was doing and i was like oh i gotta make something out of this so i i took the whole thing apart so i could use it like paper and then i realized afterwards that most of the fold lines i was using were the same so when I did it the next time, I just left the fold lines in and manhandled it a bit. And it actually is quite quick. You can trim more out, you can do whatever you want with it, but it, it does go together quite quickly. And then if I wasn't rambling about other things like chocolates. Uh, yeah, the name of the flat chocolates is Drive and Blank. Ghirardelli, is that the right name? Maybe not. Um, I think they are called Ghirardelli. Anyways, they're flat. So if you wanted to make this a lot flatter, and you didn't like, so then you would end up with a bigger, I should do that the right way. You would end up with a bigger container if you made these sizes smaller. So where I did three and a quarter on each, that makes this an inch and a half. If I did a quarter inch on each, this would only make this a half an inch wide. But if all I was doing was putting in some tea bags or a hot chocolate package, that would be more than enough. Okay, I'm slightly, oh, there we go. I was gonna say I'm slightly stalling because I couldn't find my thread either. So there's red thread in the kit. There's not very much. That's if I had to say so, this is a very tiny thing. Like there's not enough red thread in here to do very much with other than um, than like little bows on the cards. But lucky for me, I have 17 miles of twine in my house. So this is the other thing that I you can do is once you've got it folded up, you just need to close it somehow, right? So I tend to make it so that people don't completely destroy everything. So you can do it this way. So you know where your decor is gonna go. And then you can decorate it with whatever you want. I would I would actually cut some more trees just so they could stand up a little higher, but uh, I'm gonna spare you that. Oops. But you can also just do it where, so your decorations are in the bottom of the box. Uh, see, I need trees because this green on green, you can't see very well. So put your de decorations on the bottom of the box, tie your flap shut so that when people open this, it doesn't completely um, destroy all the decorations. And I guess if you wanted to, you could plan it in such a way that the decorations acted as a bit of a flap and that you could tuck under if you wanted to do that. But anyways, very easy to turn an envelope into a treat bag. And when they're this pretty, it's not a bad idea. Now we're going to turn a we're going to turn a card into a box <laughs> using oops, sorry 
threw them away. No idea what I did with it. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna we're gonna make this uh, into a box doing the same thing. So this time I'm gonna use a half an inch just to see what size it comes out as. So same idea. I don't really think it matters. I don't really think it matters what side you score on. So in this case, I'm going to go an inch on all the sides. And then I'm going to pause and think like I do every time to try to remember how to make this work. Yeah. And then you have to go, you have to go half an inch in from one of the score lines, and I've just completely forgot which one. So we're going to wing it. So in this case, I'm now putting the crease of the card on my mark. Sorry, on my half inch mark, because I can't see otherwise. I'm going to go this way. So that when my score line, this other score line, is a half an inch away. From there. Uh, so I did that wrong. I was supposed to trim this, not cut this. So let me do that again. So I can do this right. So I'm having a moment right now where all of a sudden I think I did something wrong. So let me just, before I cut anything, let me just uh, fold all these four lines. And again, right now I'm just folding by, by hand. Um, if you want with your box, you can. I'm so used to crafting on the silicone map. I have it out even though I'm not quite using it. Um, we're basically going to end up making the same kind of box you make for anything else, where you just need some flaps for the lid and some flaps for the base. So this will all come together nicely, and I will draw a picture later, or draw a picture, take pictures later of one in progress. That you can see. But all of a sudden, I'm drawing a blank on how to make my lid fit the right way. But I think I just made my lid a half an inch longer than I needed. Yes, I did. Okay. So, <laughs> anybody following anything I just did? I'm going to guess no, because <laughs> I did it super fast, but I'm going to explain it. Okay. So, what I forgot to do was to cut off a half an inch um, to to account for the back of the card. So now, because I purposely want to cut something, I'm going to put my scoring blade back in. Okay, so this is what you need to do. You need to cut a half an inch off of one side. There, I put this way now, because we're done with that. See, this is why I wanted to practice ahead of time, but I ran out of time, so now, winging it, as it were. So this is our card. I'm going to make it all make sense to you now. <laughs> all going to come together magically. Okay, so this is our card, how we started. So let's pretend I did it right. Hello, Tamara. And we cut a half an inch strip off first. Because that's the, you cut off whatever size strip you're going to make all around the edges. Okay, so I decided I'm making this half an inch deep. So I'm cutting a half an inch strip off. Now where the score line is, you're scoring a half an inch on each side. So this one has a half an inch on it now. Now that I fixed it. This one has half inch, and we're just going to trim these little tabs right now, so I can so I can bend it quicker. Okay, there we go. So half an inch on all the sides gives us all these fold lines, and all I did was make little trims on the skinny sections to make the tabs that are going to make this box. Now, wherever the where, whichever side you cut the court the half inch off of. On the opposite side, you also need to score a half an inch in from the fold. So that gives us our back piece. So that's what I was doing. Every time I make one of these, I have to like trial and error it because I forget which side I'm supposed to do which. So I will draw a map for this afterwards. But basically, we're going to take our card and we're going to fold it into a box, which I was going to try to do without taping. It's just not working. So I'm going to tape. So half an inch on each side. Fold them all over, cut out our little tabs. And in the case of a box, I should have picked, I mean, this is this is gonna make a gorgeous box, but I should have picked one that you can actually see. Um, because we're making a box, we want the least amount of gaps as possible. 
So you want to put your glue, your tear and tape, whatever you're using, as close to the score line as possible. Now, you will notice that I rarely rip the right size. I'm going to show you this in a minute here. I don't, uh, I just randomly rip. I don't measure and, you know, because I just wouldn't be me. So you'll notice that they, I tend to go off the paper a lot, but it really doesn't matter because as soon as you peel your little piece of paper off, you could just fold the part that's stuck out back on itself to get a little extra adhesion there. So, and what I meant by making sure, I'll show you here in two stages. So I'm gonna fold this. Oh, I forgot a step. I'm rushing now. Good thing I didn't. Okay, let's pretend Tracy's not rushing because she didn't do this ahead of time. Go back and do the step. It is not the end of the world if you do not make little V's on your, on your flaps, but I'll show you why you want to. So when we go to put this box together, you wanna to line up these two corners. And again, why did I pick such a dark color? <laughs> Busy pattern to not show. So you wanna line these up as close as possible. That's why when you put your adhesive on, you want it right close to this edge. Because if you put your adhesive back here on the tab, Sorry, sorry. On the tab. So if you were to put it like way back here, when you put this together, if there's no adhesive right on that crease, it's just gonna, it, you're just gonna get little gaps. And I'm gonna see if I can do this without totally wrecking it. So this one, again, I forgot to put the little, the little trim off the edges. So when you go to fold this, unless you're perfectly, everything is it's square, how they cut it, how they did everything. When you go like this, your edges are not gonna line up. They're gonna be a little off kilter. So by cutting these little V's in the flaps, and yes, I just like broke the cardinal rule of cutting something with adhesive on it with my paper scissors. <laughs> and I do have special adhesive scissors. But so by cutting these little flaps now, I need to find something that, that shows this. So yeah, so by cutting these little chunks out, it just makes it so that when you now go to line up these two edges, even if your score line's a little, didn't fold exactly straight. What you end up with is a nice clean corner as opposed to it being off. So now, because I'm getting there, I'm going to slow down and do it properly. I'm going to take my adhesive scissors and I'm just going to make little V notches. So if you ever read any, if I send you a PDF with instructions to stuff, and I tend to do it because I like to make up my own language. Um, comes from being at work. In the fire game, people just make up their own language. So a lot of years of just doing what I want. So um, I made up my own verbs. So in this case, you be these things. And I don't know why I say V because it doesn't really make a V, but you cut a V out of them. I don't know. Somehow to me, it makes sense to, to say that you be them. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing on this one. We're going to match up our corners. I keep going off. I got my I got my camera in the wrong spot today. So we're going to pop that one in. We're going to pop this one in. And then this time I'm going to put the V's on them before I put the adhesive on them, which, you know, I'd highly recommend because then you're not wasted your adhesive. Not that that was a lot of adhesive, but. Waste not, want not, as the old timers say. <laughs> not quite an old timer yet. Uh -huh. Okay, so I'm gonna put some right up against the score line. Actually, this piece is so long and the score line is so short that I probably should put it the other way, but I said, not even close to the right amount there. And you know what? Actually, this is on the front of the box. So maybe instead of making it lumpy, I'll actually just trim that off. Oops, I went off the camera again. See? Not used to that. All right. So in this, so on the, the bottom, we did all four corners. On the lid, we are just doing two corners. And then because we've done our nice little fold in the right spot, we now have a box. Ta-da! And I wish I knew the secret 
to when you make a box and it's the same as the, the fancy boxes. <laughs> Tracy's gonna try to step up and not knock her camera over. It's the same as the, like even the pre-made ones that come from Stampin' Up. Um, I, these are window boxes, I don't actually know the right name, but they don't stay closed on this corner. It's easier to see, I guess, from the other side. All the other corners are tight except for this one. These ones don't stay closed. So these ones are no different. Um, I do try to like, once they're together, give them a bit of a pinch, but for whatever reason, no matter how much you score and fold, um, those two little corners just don't have anything to tie to, so they, they come out. But is this not the coolest box? <laughs> Let's not get distracted, Tracy. Is this not the coolest box? So if you don't wanna make a card and you wanna make a lovely little gift box, and you can actually fit a fair bit in here, right? Like it's a pretty good size box. Uh, my little sample gift cards that I keep on my desk. So, I mean, you can get a lot more than a gift card in this box. You probably could. I should have thought of that ahead of time. But one of those hot chocolate packages. My guess is you probably could put a hot chocolate package in here too. So there you go. The card becomes a box. Now, what I would do, let me see what I do with my piece of string. Uh, when I tie this shut, because those these little flaps on the edge that bother me, I would. That's just where I would put my string, so that when I tied it shut. I can pull them tight, and I'm not going to show. I'm not going to do this now because it's. Uh, I haven't actually finished this box or put anything in it. But the trick to tying a tight bow, since since I'm telling you all sorts of secrets, but here you go. Um, when you get your bow this far and you think, oh, I'm good, and you're trying to like, stick your fingers in there, and if you have big meat look, meat hooks like me, that doesn't really work. Is because you were going to put your bow here anyways. Just put a glue dot there. So if you put a glue dot right where you want the like the actual bow to go. Then when you tie, you don't lose the tension that you have on the first two pieces while you're tying the second piece. Yeah, see, mine's coming apart on me. I'm used to I'm used to cheating. But if you imagined that this was a lovely bow, <laughs> as opposed to the mess that it is, uh, that's the wrong color. With the lovely little design on here, or if you die cut some of the other trees, or if you're not actually making any of your cards into cards, and you're just going to make all treat packaging, you could pop one of these lovelies out and uh, you know easily all this stuff comes out um, and instead of putting that on you could put trees on the front. You could still put some of this other stuff on the front. I'll put some trees, I'll put a little thing there, we'll put a little Noel there, boom! I like to say Bob's your uncle, I actually did have an uncle Bob. Um, there, now you have a treat box. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> so, <laughs> that was lots of fun. Oh, I even went longer than I thought I was gonna go. Okay, so next time I'll try to be more prepared, but the fact that I pulled anything off, that was pretty impressive, so there we go. So, to recap, <laughs> you can turn your card bases into boxes. You can turn your envelopes into treat bags and you can turn your tag kits into cute cards <laughs> very easily. So just because something comes out one way and, you, and they say, hey, let's, uh, let's buy a tag kit. You say, hey, that's an awesome card kit. Again, loving this thing. I can't believe how much I love the pink, but I do totally love these little, little yellow cars. So there we go, ladies. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining for the gong show that was. Um, and I know I said this before when I did the first Technique Tuesday with um, with my Stamparatus and somewhere on the corner of my desk is the same pile of cards that I said, I'm gonna finish making these into cards and I'll post pictures. Yep, I'm still gonna do that. I'm also gonna finish making these into the projects that they're intended to be. I just have to actually put stuff in them before I seal them up. And uh, I will finish those other two cards off too. And I will post some pictures. So I'm gonna commit because I don't like to disappoint. I'm gonna commit and then I have no choice but to do it, to have the Stamparatus pictures and these pictures done and posted by the end of this week. There you go, stay tuned. <laughs> the week's already like, I'm so far behind it's only Tuesday, but nonetheless, I'm gonna make this work. So there you go. Thank you everybody, that was lots of fun. I need to submit those to the Paper Pumpkin team so I can be featured. I really should one time, right? Um, I would have to figure out what the deadline was and 
and actually get on the ball and do it ahead of time. But I do come up with, I do like to make the alternatives. Um, like I said, the rebel in me doesn't, uh, doesn't always do exactly what I'm told to do. <laughs> so I, yeah. Okay. I'm going to figure out what the date for that is. Maybe I will. Maybe this will be the one time that I do it because I don't have anything else on my plate. Oh, I can't get over how much I love this box and this card. Oh, well, I mean, I like lots of stuff, but my particular favorites, this box, just like this with a proper bow, of course, and this, and actually I, for, I totally forgot this um, paper pumpkin kit. I don't think it's going to show. Oh, here we go. Maybe this will work. It comes with these uh, snazzy little snowballs. Uh, because I can't remember the names of the things, I just make up my own. Comes with these little snowballs. So throwing a couple of those little shiny snowballs on there, that'd be awesome. Uh, you probably could. You know what? This stamp works too. Look at me. I'm just going to town now. Um, this stamp here says, from our home to yours. And it will fit on this little strip. So if you wanted to, you could put that on there. And then when you give it to your neighbor as a neighbor gift, it says from our home to yours. Mm -hmm. Okay, so many ideas. Better stop while I'm ahead. We're behind in this case. Thank you, everybody. This time I mean it. I'm actually going to say goodbye. Thanks for joining me. Have a lovely Tuesday. And uh, don't forget, check it out Tuesday with Miss Tamara this evening. We'll see you all then. Bye.